The FBI has opened up an investigation on the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge and whether the crew of the ship Dali knew that there were problems on board the ship before it left port. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, State Attorney for Palm Beach County, aka the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. I want to thank you all for your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. Let's keep them coming. And you may be wondering why I'm here. This is not my usual place where I do videos, but I'm traveling and so the show must go on and we've got some new news and that involves the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, the massive cargo ship that ran into the bridge. It was on uh, March 26 at 1.30 in the morning. Well, at first we all were told it was an accident because the power went off a couple times on the ship and then it ran into the bridge and it took down uh, the bridge entirely and tragically six construction workers who were working on potholes on the bridge lost their lives when they fell into the river and the FBI has just boarded the ship because they are investigating whether this was a crime now as a prosecutor I can tell you it's it's not easy to prove a crime here especially because you have evidence that this was an accident. The fact that the power went off and the fact that there were repeated attempts to turn it back on, the fact that there were mayday calls that did end up saving lives because traffic was stopped before the cars can go onto the bridge. So those mayday calls saved lives. The uh, person who was running, who was operating the ship was actually the port pilot. It's a very well experienced um, pilot who is also known as harbor pilots that are regulated by the state and they are entrusted to come on board and lead the ship in and out of the port. The port pilots are designated by the state to get on board and to make sure that these ships can go in and out of these uh, ports easily and also to protect against possible threats of terrorism. Uh, these harbor pilots or port pilots are well-trained and they are plum jobs. These are jobs that there's a long waiting list for because they get paid a lot of money because the state sets the fees and the cruise ships, they often hate having to deal with these guys because they think that those cruise ships can pretty much operate in and out of the harbors on their own. They can just go in and out. They're automated and they've got captains who can do it, but the laws of various states require that you have these harbor pilots who come on board. And there was one on board when this happened. So the only way I think that you could find criminal exposure here would be if the crew of the ship knew that there were problems on the ship and did not report them, or knew there were problems and still went ahead where it's foreseeable that an accident like this could happen. And that could come under gross negligence, like we saw in the Hannah Gutierrez Reed case, you know, the armorer for the movie Rust. It was not intentional that she brought or allowed um, live ammunition onto the set, but even an accident, if it's caused by gross negligence, can be criminal. And the same thing is true here. And that's what the investigators are going to be looking for, especially when you have the deaths of six individuals you're gonna make sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. So that's what's happening. And uh, it's in addition to the civil investigations that's occurring. According to an Axios article, the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon M. Scott, announced that the city had hired two law firms to take legal action regarding the bridge collapse and its impacts. Quote, through this engagement, the city of Baltimore will take decisive action to hold responsible all entities accountable for the Key Bridge tragedy, including the owner, charterer, manager, operator, and the manufacturer of the MV, Dali, as well as any other potentially liable third parties. When you pursue a civil claim, it is easier than a criminal one because you just have to prove negligence, that there was a violation of a duty of care, and it only needs to be proven by a preponderance of the evidence, not beyond a reasonable doubt. So we're talking about is more likely than not that negligence occurred. Plus, you don't have to prove gross negligence like you would for a criminal case, just basic negligence. So 
it is much easier. And you can see why the city of Baltimore would be moving ahead with this because they got to build a new bridge. And I know the federal government is saying they're going to take care of the cost, but the city still has costs and a lot of trauma for having go to go through this. So I'm not surprised they've retained law firms and they're moving ahead with civil action. But there's a problem, and that is an old law from the 19th century. We're talking about a law that was used in the Titanic uh, sinking, where uh, the owners of the Titanic were able to limit their liability. As a Bloomberg article said, an 1851 law could lower the exposure to tens of millions of dollars by capping the ship owner's liability at how much the vessel is worth after the crash, plus any earnings it collected from carrying the freight on board. The law was passed initially to prevent shipping giants from suffering steep and insurmountable losses from disasters at sea. An eight-figure sum, while still hefty, would amount to considerably less than the full claims total. And indeed, the owner of the ship, a company called Grace Ocean Private Limited, has already filed a petition in federal court asking for a limit of $43.6 million in potential liability payments. So it's already happening. And I want to get into maritime law just briefly because I know it can be a dry subject, but I think it's important to know uh, one of the criminal statutes that the feds are going to be looking at. So in addition to involuntary manslaughter, which we mentioned like in the Hannah Gutierrez-Reed case, which is where it's just not intentional, it's where you have gross negligence. The feds could also look to see one of these laws called uh, Siemens manslaughter, and that's under 18 U.S.C. 1115. And the statute says every captain, engineer, pilot, or other person employed on any steamboat or vessel by whose misconduct, negligence, or inattention to his duties on such vessel, the life of any person is destroyed and every owner, charter, inspector, or other public officer through which, through whose fraud, neglect, connivance, misconduct, or violation of law, the life of any person is destroyed, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. So we're talking about serious penalties here. And there are reports that the, uh, the ship had a delayed departure because something went wrong and the crew may not have reported that problem. So this is the kind of thing that the feds are investigating. Did they know that there was a problem? Did they fail to report a problem? And so maybe it's not just a pure accident. Maybe it's something that could have been avoided and maybe it is gross negligence or what you call Siemens manslaughter. Maritime has all these arcane laws that apply just to it. And it's the kind of thing that a prosecutor is going to have to probably bring in some experts in that area to figure out if charges should be brought. Because when you bring charges for criminal law, you have to have a good faith basis that you can get a conviction beyond a reasonable doubt. And when you have complex laws, it's tougher to get a jury to say, yeah, uh, there's no reasonable doubt here that they're guilty of these laws that you know, were, were drafted perhaps in the 19th century. So, uh, this thing is going to go on for a while, uh, but it is a major development in this case that it looks like there is a possibility of criminal charges. At the very least, the uh, ball has been put in motion. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We are getting really close to 30,000 subscribers, so help us get over the top. And I'll see you next time.